Democratic socialism is a political philosophy that advocates political democracy alongside social ownership of the means of production with an emphasis on self-management and democratic management of economic institutions within a market or some form of decentralized planned socialist economy. Democratic socialists hold that capitalism is inherently incompatible with what they hold to be the democratic values of liberty, equality and solidarity, and that these ideals can only be achieved through the realization of a socialist society. Democratic socialism can be supportive of either revolutionary or reformist politics as a means to establish socialism. The term, democratic socialism, is sometimes used synonymously with socialism, but the adjective, democratic, is sometimes used to distinguish democratic socialists from Marxist Leninist inspired socialism, which is viewed as being non democratic in practice. Democratic socialists oppose the Stalinist political system and Soviet economic model, rejecting the authoritarian form of governance and highly centralized command economy that took form in the Soviet Union in the early 20th century. Democratic socialism is further distinguished from social democracy on the basis that democratic socialists are committed to systemic transformation of the economy from capitalism to socialism, whereas social democracy is supportive of reforms to capitalism. In contrast to social democrats, democratic socialists believe that reforms aimed at addressing social inequalities and state interventions aimed at suppressing the economic contradictions of capitalism will only see them emerge elsewhere in a different guise. As socialists, democratic socialists believe that the systemic issues of capitalism can only be solved by replacing the capitalist system with a socialist system i.e. by replacing private ownership with social ownership of the means of production. There is considerable overlap between democratic socialists and social democrats on practical policy positions, with the former supporting social democratic positions as practical reforms within capitalism, the distinction being democratic socialists ultimately want to go beyond social democratic reform. Policies commonly supported by democratic socialists and social democrats include some degree of regulation over the economy, social insurance schemes, public pension programs, and a gradual expansion of public ownership over major industries. Partly because of this overlap, some political commentators use the terms interchangeably. The origins of democratic socialism can be traced to 19th century utopian socialist thinkers and the British Chartist movement, which differed in detail but all shared the essence of democratic decision making and public ownership in the means of production as positive characteristics of the society they advocated. In the early 20th century, the gradualist reformism promoted by the British Fabian Society and Eduard Bernstein in Germany influenced the development of democratic socialism. Topic. Definition Democratic socialism is defined as having a socialist economy in which the means of production including wealth are socially and collectively owned or controlled alongside a politically democratic system of government. Peter Hain classifies democratic socialism, along with libertarian socialism, as a form of anti-authoritarian socialism from below, using the term popularized by Hal Draper, in contrast to Stalinism, a variant of authoritarian state socialism. For Hain, this democratic, authoritarian divide is more important than the revolutionary, reformist divide. In this type of democratic socialism, it is the active participation of the population as a whole and workers in particular in the management of economy that characterizes democratic socialism while nationalization and economic planning whether controlled by an elected government or not are characteristic of state socialism. A similar, but more complex argument is made by Nikos Poulances. Draper himself uses the term, revolutionary democratic socialism as a type of socialism from below in his The Two Souls of Socialism and writes, T. He leading spokesman in the Second International of a Revolutionary Democratic Socialism from Below was Rosa Luxemburg, who so emphatically put her faith and hope in the spontaneous struggle of a free working class that the myth-makers invented for her a theory of spontaneity. Similarly, about Eugene Debs he writes, Debsian socialism evoked a tremendous response from the heart of the people, but Debs had no successor as a tribune of revolutionary democratic socialism. Tendencies of democratic socialism follow a gradual, reformist or evolutionary path to socialism rather than a revolutionary one. 
This tendency is often invoked in an attempt to distinguish democratic socialism from Marxist-Leninist socialism as in Donald Buskey's Democratic Socialism, A Global Survey, Jim Tomlinson's Democratic Socialism and Economic Policy, The Attlee Years, 1945–1951, Norman Thomas' Democratic Socialism, A New Appraisal or Roy Hattersley's Choose Freedom, The Future of Democratic Socialism. A variant of this set of definitions is Joseph Schumpeter's argument, set out in Capitalism, Socialism and Democracy 1941, that liberal democracies were evolving from «liberal capitalism» into democratic socialism, with the growth of workers' self-management, industrial democracy and regulatory institutions. For example the new version of Clause IV of the Constitution of the UK Labour Party, though affirming a commitment to democratic socialism, no longer definitely commits the party to public ownership of industry, in its place it advocates, "...the enterprise of the market and the rigour of competition," along with, "...high quality public services either owned by the public or accountable to them." Scholar Lyman Tower Sargent proposes that, Democratic socialism can be characterized as follows, much property held by the public through a democratically elected government, including most major industries, utilities, and transportation systems, a limit on the accumulation of private property, governmental regulation of the economy, extensive publicly financed assistance and pension programs, Social costs and the provision of services added to purely financial considerations as the measure of efficiency. Publicly held property is limited to productive property and significant infrastructure, it does not extend to personal property, homes, and small businesses. And in practice in many democratic socialist countries, it has not extended to many large corporations. Another example is the Democratic Socialists of America who define socialism as a decentralized socially owned economy, but while ultimately committed to socialism they focus their political activities on reforms within capitalism. Social ownership could take many forms, such as worker-owned cooperatives or publicly owned enterprises managed by workers and consumer representatives. Democratic socialists favor as much decentralization as possible. While the large concentrations of capital in industries such as energy and steel may necessitate some form of state ownership, many consumer goods industries might be best run as cooperatives. Democratic socialists have long rejected the belief that the whole economy should be centrally planned. While we believe that democratic planning can shape major social investments like mass transit, housing, and energy, market mechanisms are needed to determine the demand for many consumer goods. As we are unlikely to see an immediate end to capitalism tomorrow, DSA fights for reforms today that will weaken the power of corporations and increase the power of working people. For Labour Party UK politician and ex-MP Peter Hain, Democratic socialism should mean an active, democratically accountable state to underpin individual freedom and deliver the conditions for everyone to be empowered regardless of who they are or what their income is. It should be complemented by decentralization and empowerment to achieve increased democracy and social justice. Today democratic socialism's task is to recover the high ground on democracy and freedom through maximum decentralization of control, ownership and decision making. For socialism can only be achieved if it springs from below by popular demand. The task of socialist government should be an enabling one, not an enforcing one. Its mission is to disperse rather than to concentrate power, with a pluralist notion of democracy at its heart. The term is sometimes used to refer to policies within capitalism as opposed to an ideology that aims to transcend and replace capitalism, though this is not always the case. For example, Robert M. Page, a reader in Democratic Socialism and Social Policy at the University of Birmingham, writes about transformative democratic socialism. To refer to the politics of the Clement Attlee government a strong welfare state, fiscal redistribution and some public ownership and revisionist democratic socialism, as developed by Anthony Crossland and Harold Wilson. The most influential revisionist labor thinker, Anthony Crossland, contended that a more benevolent form of capitalism had emerged since the Second World War. According to Crossland, it was now possible to achieve greater equality in society without the need for fundamental economic transformation. 
For Crossland, a more meaningful form of equality could be achieved if the growth dividend derived from effective management of the economy was invested in pro-poor public services rather than through fiscal redistribution. Some proponents of market socialism see it as an economic system compatible with the political ideology of democratic socialism. Some tendencies of democratic socialism advocate for revolution in order to transition to socialism, distinguishing it from some forms of social democracy. The term, democratic socialism, can be used even another way to refer to a version of the Soviet model that was reformed in a democratic way. For example, Mikhail Gorbachev described perestroika as building a new, humane and democratic socialism. Consequently, some former communist parties have rebranded themselves as democratic socialist, as with the Party of Democratic Socialism in Germany. Philosophical support for democratic socialism can be found in the works of political philosophers like Charles Taylor and Axel Honneth, among others. Honneth has put forward the view that political and economic ideologies have a social basis, that is they originate from intersubjective communication between members of a society. Honneth criticizes the liberal state because it assumes that principles of individual liberty and private property are ahistorical and abstract, when in fact they evolved from a specific social discourse on human activity. Contra liberal individualism, Honneth has emphasized the inter subjective dependence between humans, that is, our well being depends on recognizing others and being recognized by them. Democratic socialism with an emphasis on community and solidarity can be seen as a way of safeguarding this dependency. History 19th century Socialist models and ideas espousing common or public ownership have existed since antiquity but the first self-conscious socialist movements developed in the 1820s and 1830s. West European social critics, including Robert Owen, Charles Fourier, Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, Louis Blanc, Charles Hall, and Saint Simon were the first modern socialists who criticized the excessive poverty and inequality of the Industrial Revolution. They also, especially in the case of the Owenites, overlapped with a number of other working-class movements like the Chartists in the United Kingdom. The Chartists gathered significant numbers around the People's Charter of 1838, which demanded the extension of suffrage to all male adults. Leaders in the movement also called for a more equitable distribution of income and better living conditions for the working classes. The very first trade unions and consumers' cooperative societies also emerged in the hinterland of the Chartist movement as a way of bolstering the fight for these demands. The first advocates of socialism favored social leveling in order to create a meritocratic or technocratic society based on individual talent. Count Henri de Saint-Simon is regarded as the first individual to coin the term socialism. Saint-Simon was fascinated by the enormous potential of science and technology and advocated a socialist society that would eliminate the disorderly aspects of capitalism and would be based on equal opportunities. He advocated the creation of a society in which each person was ranked according to his or her capacities and rewarded according to his or her work. The key focus of St. Simon's socialism was on administrative efficiency and industrialism and a belief that science was the key to progress. This was accompanied by a desire to implement a rationally organized economy based on planning and geared towards large-scale scientific and material progress, thus embodied a desire for a more directed or planned economy. In the United Kingdom, the democratic socialist tradition was represented in particular by William Morris's Socialist League and in the 1880s by the Fabian Society and later the Independent Labour Party founded by Keir Hardy in the 1890s, of which writer George Orwell would later be a prominent member. In the early 1920s, the Guild Socialism of G. D. H. Cole attempted to envision a socialist alternative to Soviet-style authoritarianism, while Council Communism articulated democratic socialist positions in several respects, notably through renouncing the vanguard role of the Revolutionary Party and holding that the system of the Soviet Union was not authentically socialist. The Fabian Society is a British socialist organization which was established with the purpose of advancing the principles of socialism via gradualist and reformist means. 
The society laid many of the foundations of the Labour Party and subsequently affected the policies of states emerging from the decolonisation of the British Empire, most notably India and Singapore. Originally, the Fabian Society was committed to the establishment of a socialist economy, alongside a commitment to British imperialism as a progressive and modernising force. Today, the society functions primarily as a think tank and is one of 15 socialist societies affiliated with the Labour Party. Similar societies exist in Australia, the Australian Fabian Society, in Canada, the Douglas Coldwell Foundation and the now disbanded League for Social Reconstruction, and in New Zealand. In 1889, the centennial of the French Revolution of 1789, the Second International was founded with 384 delegates from 20 countries representing about 300 labor and socialist organizations. It was termed the Socialist International and Engels was elected honorary president at the Third Congress in 1893. Anarchists were ejected and not allowed in, mainly due to pressure from Marxists. It has been argued that at some point the Second International turned into a battleground over the issue of libertarian versus authoritarian socialism. Not only did they effectively present themselves as champions of minority rights, they also provoked the German Marxists into demonstrating a dictatorial intolerance which was a factor in preventing the British labour movement from following the Marxist direction indicated by such leaders as H. M. Hindman. Reformism arose as an alternative to revolution. Eduard Bernstein was a leading social democrat in Germany who proposed the concept of evolutionary socialism. Revolutionary socialists quickly targeted reformism. Rosa Luxemburg condemned Bernstein's evolutionary socialism in her 1900 essay Social Reform or Revolution. Revolutionary socialism encompasses multiple social and political movements that may define revolution differently from one another. The Social Democratic Party SPD in Germany became the largest and most powerful socialist party in Europe, despite working illegally until the anti-socialist laws were dropped in 1890. In the 1893 elections, it gained 1,787,000 votes, a quarter of the total votes cast, according to Engels. In 1895, the year of his death, Engels emphasized the Communist Manifesto's emphasis on winning, as a first step, the battle of democracy. Early 20th century The socialist industrial unionism of Daniel Delian in the United States represented another strain of early democratic socialism in this period. It favored a form of government based on industrial unions, but which also sought to establish this government after winning at the ballot box. The tradition continued to flourish in the Socialist Party of America especially under the leadership of Norman Thomas the Socialist Party of America was formed in 1901 by a merger between the three-year-old Social Democratic Party of America and disaffected elements of the Socialist Labor Party of America which had split from the main organization in 1899. Eugene V. Debs twice won over 900,000 votes in presidential elections 1912 and 1920 while the party also elected two representatives Victor L. Berger and Meyer London, dozens of state legislators, more than a hundred mayors and countless lesser officials. In Argentina the Socialist Party of Argentina was established in the 1890s led by, among others, Juan B. Justo and Nicolas Repetto, thus becoming the first mass party in the country and in Latin America. The party affiliated itself with the Second International. Between 1924 and 1940 it was a member of the Labour and Socialist International. In 1904, Australians elected Chris Watson as the first Australian Labour Party Prime Minister, becoming the first democratically elected Democratic Socialist. The British Labour Party first won seats in the House of Commons in 1902. The International Socialist Commission ISC, also known as Bern International was formed in February 1919 at a meeting in Bern by parties that wanted to resurrect the Second International. By 1917, the patriotism of World War I changed into political radicalism in most of Europe, the United States and Australia. Other socialist parties from around the world who were beginning to gain importance in their national politics in the early 20th century included the Italian Socialist Party, the French Section of the Workers' International, the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party, the Swedish Social Democratic Party, the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party, the Socialist Party of America in the United States, the Chilean Partido Obrero Socialista. 
In February 1917, revolution exploded in Russia. Workers, soldiers and peasants established Soviets councils, the monarchy fell and a provisional government convoked pending the election of a constituent assembly. Alexander Kerensky was a Russian lawyer and revolutionary who was a key political figure in the Russian Revolution of 1917. After the February Revolution of 1917 he joined the newly formed Russian Provisional Government, first as Minister of Justice, then as Minister of War, and after July as the government's second minister chairman. A leader of the moderate socialist Trudoviks faction of the Socialist Revolutionary Party, he was also vice-chairman of the powerful Petrograd Soviet. On 7 November, his government was overthrown by the Lenin-led Bolsheviks in the October Revolution. The Constituent Assembly elected Socialist Revolutionary Leader Viktor Chernov President of a Russian Republic, but rejected the Bolshevik proposal that it endorse the Soviet decrees on land, peace and workers' control and acknowledge the power of the Soviets of workers, soldiers and peasants' deputies. The next day, the Bolsheviks declared that the Assembly was elected on outdated party lists and the All-Russian Central Executive Committee of the Soviets dissolved it. Parties which did not want to be a part of the resurrected Second International ISC or Comintern formed the International Working Union of Socialist Parties IWUSP, also known as Vienna International, Vienna Union, Two and a Half International on 27 February 1921 at a conference in Vienna. The ISC and the IWUSP joined to form the Labour and Socialist International in May 1923 at a meeting in Hamburg left-wing groups which did not agree to the centralization and abandonment of the Soviets by the Bolshevik Party led left-wing uprisings against the Bolsheviks. Such groups included socialist revolutionaries, left socialist revolutionaries, Mensheviks and anarchists. Within this left-wing discontent, the most large-scale events were the Workers' Kronstadt Rebellion and the anarchist-led Revolutionary Insurrectionary Army of Ukraine Uprising which controlled an area known as the Free Territory. In 1922, the Fourth Congress of the Communist International took up the policy of the United Front, urging communists to work with rank-and-file Social Democrats while remaining critical of their leaders, whom they criticized for betraying the working class by supporting the war efforts of their respective capitalist classes. For their part, the Social Democrats pointed to the dislocation caused by revolution and later the growing authoritarianism of the Communist parties. When the Communist Party of Great Britain applied to affiliate to the Labour Party in 1920, it was turned down. On seeing the Soviet state's growing coercive power in 1923, a dying Lenin said Russia had reverted to a bourgeois Tsarist machine barely varnished with socialism. After Lenin's death in January 1924, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, then increasingly under the control of Joseph Stalin, rejected the theory that socialism could not be built solely in the Soviet Union in favor of the concept of socialism in one country. Topic: <laughs> Mid 20th century. After World War II social democratic, socialist and labor governments introduced social reform and wealth redistribution via state welfare and taxation. Those parties dominated post-war politics in countries such as France, Italy, Czechoslovakia, Belgium and Norway. At one point, France claimed to be the world's most state-controlled capitalist country. The nationalized public utilities included Charbonnages de France CDF, Electricité de France EDF, Gaz de France GDF, Air France, Banque de France and Régie Nationale des Usines Renault. In 1945, the British Labour Party led by Clement Attlee was elected to office based on a radical socialist program. The Labour government nationalized major public utilities such as mines, gas, coal, electricity, rail, iron, steel and the Bank of England. British petroleum was officially nationalized in 1951. Anthony Crossland said that in 1956 25% of British industry was nationalized and that public employees, including those in nationalized industries, constituted a similar proportion of the country's total employed population. The Labour governments of 1964-1970 and 1974-1979 intervened further. It re-nationalized steel 1967, British Steel after the Conservatives had denationalized it and nationalized car production 1976, British Leyland. The National Health Service provided taxpayer-funded health care to everyone, free at the point of service. 
Working class housing was provided in council housing estates and university education became available via a school grant system. The Nordic model is the economic and social models of the Nordic countries Denmark, Iceland, Norway, Sweden and Finland. During most of the post-war era, Sweden was governed by the Swedish Social Democratic Party largely in cooperation with trade unions and industry. In Sweden, the Social Democratic Party held power from 1936 to 1976, 1982 to 1991, 1994 to 2006 and 2014 to present. Tage Erlander was the leader of the Swedish Social Democratic Party and led the government from 1946 to 1969, an uninterrupted tenure of 23 years, one of the longest in any democracy. From 1945 to 1962, the Norwegian Labour Party held an absolute majority in the parliament led by Einagur Hardson who was Prime Minister with 17 years in office. This particular adaptation of the mixed market economy is characterized by more generous welfare states relative to other developed countries, which are aimed specifically at enhancing individual autonomy, ensuring the universal provision of basic human rights and stabilizing the economy. It is distinguished from other welfare states with similar goals by its emphasis on maximizing labor force participation, promoting gender equality, egalitarian and extensive benefit levels, large magnitude of redistribution, and expansionary fiscal policy. The Hungarian Revolution of 1956 was a spontaneous nationwide revolt against the government of the People's Republic of Hungary and its Soviet imposed policies, lasting from 23 October until 10 November 1956. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev's denunciation of the excesses of Stalin's regime during the 20th Party Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union on 1956 as well as the revolt in Hungary, produced ideological fractures and disagreements within the communist and socialist parties of Western Europe. In the United Kingdom, the democratic socialist tradition was represented in particular by William Morris's Socialist League and in the 1880s by the Fabian Society and later the Independent Labour Party founded by Keir Hardy in the 1890s, of which writer George Orwell would later be a prominent member. During India's freedom movement, many figures on the left wing of the Indian National Congress organised themselves as the Congress Socialist Party. Their politics and those of the early and intermediate periods of Jayaprakash Narayan's career combined a commitment to the socialist transformation of society with a principled opposition to the one-party authoritarianism they perceived in the Stalinist revolutionary model. In the post-war years, socialism became increasingly influential throughout the so-called Third World. Embracing a new Third World socialism, countries in Africa, Asia and Latin America often nationalized industries held by foreign owners. The New Left was a term used mainly in the United Kingdom and United States in reference to activists, educators, agitators and others in the 1960s and 1970s who sought to implement a broad range of reforms on issues such as gay rights, abortion, gender roles and drugs in contrast to earlier leftist or Marxist movements that had taken a more vanguardist approach to social justice and focused mostly on labor unionization and questions of social class. The New Left rejected involvement with the labor movement and Marxism's historical theory of class struggle. In the United States, the New Left was associated with the hippie movement and anti-war college campus protest movements as well as the black liberation movements such as the Black Panther Party. While initially formed in opposition to the old left, Democratic Party, groups composing the New Left gradually became central players in the Democratic Coalition. The protests of 1968 represented a worldwide escalation of social conflicts, predominantly characterized by popular rebellions against military, capitalist, and bureaucratic elites who responded with an escalation of political repression. These protests marked a turning point for the civil rights movement in the United States, which produced revolutionary movements like the Black Panther Party. The prominent civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. organized the Poor People's Campaign to address issues of economic justice, while personally showing sympathy with democratic socialism. In reaction to the Tet Offensive, protests also sparked a broad movement in opposition to the Vietnam War all over the United States and even into London, Paris, Berlin and Rome. Mass socialist or communist movements grew not only in the United States, but also in most European countries. The most spectacular manifestation of this were the May 1968 protests in France in which students linked up with strikes of up to 10 million workers and for a few days the movement seemed capable of overthrowing the government. 
In many other capitalist countries, struggles against dictatorship, state repression and colonization were also marked by protests in 1968, such as the beginning of the Troubles in Northern Ireland, the Tlatelolca massacre in Mexico City and the escalation of guerrilla warfare against the military dictatorship in Brazil. Countries governed by communist parties had protests against bureaucratic and military elites. In Eastern Europe there were widespread protests that escalated particularly in the Prague Spring in Czechoslovakia. In response, Soviet Union occupied Czechoslovakia, but the occupation was denounced by the Italian and French Communist parties and the Communist Party of Finland. <laughs> Late 20th century In Latin America in the 1960s, liberation theology, a socialist tendency within the Roman Catholic Church, developed. In Chile, Salvador Allende, a physician and candidate for the Socialist Party of Chile, was elected president through democratic elections in 1970. In 1973, his government was ousted by the United States-backed military dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet, which lasted until the late 1980s. Michael Manley served as the fourth Prime Minister of Jamaica from 1972 to 1980 and from 1989 to 1992. According to opinion polls, he remains one of Jamaica's most popular Prime Ministers since independence. Eurocommunism was a trend in the 1970s and 1980s in various Western European Communist parties to develop a theory and practice of social transformation that was more relevant for a Western European country and less aligned to the influence or control of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Outside Western Europe, it is sometimes called neocommunism. Some communist parties with strong popular support, notably the Italian Communist Party PCI and the Communist Party of Spain PCE, adopted Eurocommunism most enthusiastically, and the Communist Party of Finland was dominated by Eurocommunists. In the late 1970s and in the 1980s, the Socialist International SI had extensive contacts and discussion with the two powers of the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union, about East-West relations and arms control. Since then, the SI has admitted as member parties the Nicaraguan FSLN, the left-wing Puerto Rican Independence Party, as well as former communist parties such as the Democratic Party of the Left of Italy and the Front for the Liberation of Mozambique Frelimo. The SI aided social democratic parties in re-establishing themselves when dictatorship gave way to democracy in Portugal 1974 and Spain 1975. Until its 1976 Geneva Congress, the SI had few members outside Europe and no formal involvement with Latin America. The Democratic Socialists of America (DSA) was founded in 1983. Michael Harrington and socialist feminist author Barbara Ehrenreich were elected as co-chairs of the organization. The organization does not stand its own candidates in elections, but instead fights for reforms that will weaken the power of corporations and increase the power of working people." The Panhellenic Socialist Movement was a social democratic political party in Greece. PASOK was founded in Greece on 3 September 1974 by Andreas Papandreou as a democratic socialist and left-wing nationalist party, following the collapse of the military junta of 1967–1974. As a result of the 1981 legislative election, Pazak became Greece's first left-of-center party to win a majority in the Hellenic parliament. Mikhail Gorbachev wished to move the Soviet Union towards a Nordic-style social democracy, calling it a socialist beacon for all mankind. Prior to its dissolution in 1991, the Soviet Union had the second-largest economy in the world after the United States. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, the economic integration of the Soviet republics was dissolved and overall industrial activity declined substantially. A lasting legacy remains in the physical infrastructure created during decades of combined industrial production practices, and widespread environmental destruction. The transition to capitalism in the former Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc was accompanied by a steep fall in the standard of living, poverty, unemployment, inequality and excess mortality rose sharply which was accompanied by the entrenchment of a newly established business oligarchy in the former. The average post-socialist country had returned to 1989 levels of per capita GDP by 2005. Many social democratic parties, particularly after the Cold War, adopted neoliberal market policies including privatization, deregulation and financialization. 
They abandoned their pursuit of moderate socialism in favour of market liberalism. In the United Kingdom, Labour Party leader Neil Kinnock made a public attack against the Entreist group Militant at the 1985 Labour Party conference. The Labour Party ruled that Militant was ineligible for affiliation with the Labour Party, and the party gradually expelled Militant supporters. The Kinnock leadership had refused to support the 1984–1985 miners' strike over pit closures, a decision that the party's left wing and the National Union of Mine Workers blamed for the strike's eventual defeat. In 1989 at Stockholm, the 18th Congress of the Socialist International adopted a new declaration of principles, saying, democratic socialism is an international movement for freedom, social justice, and solidarity. Its goal is to achieve a peaceful world where these basic values can be enhanced and where each individual can live a meaningful life with the full development of his or her personality and talents, and with the guarantee of human and civil rights in a democratic framework of society. In the 1990s, the British Labour Party under Tony Blair enacted policies based on the free market economy to deliver public services via the private finance initiative. Influential in these policies was the idea of a third way, which called for a re evaluation of welfare state policies. In 1995, the Labour Party redefined its stance on socialism by rewording Clause IV of its constitution, effectively rejecting socialism by removing all references to public, direct worker or municipal ownership of the means of production. The Labour Party stated, "...the Labour Party is a democratic socialist party. It believes that, by the strength of our common endeavour we achieve more than we achieve alone, so as to create, for each of us, the means to realise our true potential, and, for all of us, a community in which power, wealth, and opportunity are in the hands of the many, not the few." <laughs> 21st century The Progressive Alliance is a political international founded on the 22nd of May 2013 by political parties, the majority of whom are current or former members of the Socialist International. The organization states the aim of becoming the global network of the Progressive, Democratic, Social Democratic, Socialist and Labour Movement. Topic: Africa. African socialism has been and continues to be a major ideology around the continent. In South Africa the African National Congress ANC abandoned its partial socialist allegiances after taking power and followed a standard neoliberal route. From 2005 through to 2007, the country was racked by many thousands of protests from poor communities. One of these gave rise to a mass movement of shack dwellers, Abilali Basmyandolo that despite major police suppression continues to work for popular people's planning and against the creation of a market economy in land and housing. <laughs> Asia In Japan, the Japanese Communist Party does not advocate violent revolution, instead it proposes a democratic revolution to achieve democratic change in politics and the economy." There has been a resurgent interest in the Japanese Communist Party among workers and youth due to the financial crisis of the late 2000s. In Malaysia, the Socialist Party of Malaysia got its first member of parliament, Dr. Jayakumar Devaraj, after the 2008 general election. In 2010, there were 270 kibbutzim in Israel. Their factories and farms account for 9% of Israel's industrial output, worth $8 billion and 40% of its agricultural output, worth over $1.7 billion. Some kibbutzim had also developed substantial high-tech and military industries. Also in 2010, Kibbutz Sasa, containing some 200 members, generated $850 million in annual revenue from its military plastics industry. Europe. The United Nations World Happiness Report 2013 shows that the happiest nations are concentrated in Northern Europe, where the Nordic model of social democracy is employed, with Denmark topping the list. This is at times attributed to the success of the Nordic model in the region. The Nordic countries ranked highest on the metrics of real GDP per capita, healthy life expectancy, having someone to count on, perceived freedom to make life choices, generosity and freedom from corruption. Indeed, the indicators of freedom in the world have listed Scandinavian countries as ranking high on indicators such as press and economic freedom. 
The objectives of the Party of European Socialists, the European Parliament's socialist and social democratic bloc, are now to pursue international aims in respect of the principles on which the European Union is based, namely principles of freedom, equality, solidarity, democracy, respect of human rights and fundamental freedoms, and respect for the rule of law." As a result, today the rallying cry of the French Revolution—liberté, égalité, fraternité—is promoted as essential socialist values. To the left of the PES at the European level is the Party of the European Left PEL, also commonly abbreviated European Left, which is a political party at the European level and an association of democratic socialist, socialist and communist political parties in the European Union and other European countries. It was formed in January 2004 for the purposes of running in the 2004 European Parliament elections. PEL was founded on 8 to 9 May 2004 in Rome. Elected MEPs from member parties of the European Left sit in the European United Left Nordic Green Left (UNGL) group in the European Parliament. The Socialist Left Party in Germany grew in popularity due to dissatisfaction with the increasingly neoliberal policies of the SPD, becoming the fourth biggest party in Parliament in the general election on the 27th of September 2009. Communist candidate Dimitris Christofias won a crucial presidential runoff in Cyprus, defeating his conservative rival with a majority of 53%. In Denmark, the Socialist People's Party SF more than doubled its parliamentary representation to 23 seats from 11, making it the fourth largest party. In 2011, the Social Democrats, Socialist People's Party and the Danish Social Liberal Party formed government, after a slight victory over the main rival political coalition. They were led by Hela Thorning Schmidt, and had the Red Green Alliance as a supporting party. In Norway, the Red Green Coalition consists of the Labour Party, AP, the Socialist Left Party, SV, and the Centre Party, SP, and governed the country as a majority government from the 2005 general election until 2013. In the Greek legislative election of January 2015, the coalition of the radical left SYRIZA led by Alexis Tsipras won a legislative election for the first time while the Communist Party of Greece won 15 seats in parliament. SYRIZA has been characterized as an anti-establishment party, whose success has sent shock waves across the EU. In the United Kingdom, the National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers put forward a slate of candidates in the 2009 European Parliament elections under the banner of No to EU, Yes to Democracy, a broad left-wing alter globalization coalition involving socialist groups such as the Socialist Party, aiming to offer an alternative to the anti-foreigner and pro-business policies of the UK Independence Party. In the following May 2010 United Kingdom general election, the Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition, launched in January 2010 and backed by Bob Crow, the leader of the National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers Union RMT, other union leaders and the Socialist Party among other socialist groups, stood against Labour in 40 constituencies. The Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition contested the 2011 local elections, having gained the endorsement of the RMT June 2010 conference, but gained no seats. Left Unity was also founded in 2013 after the film director Ken Loach appealed for a new party of the left to replace the Labour Party, which he claimed had failed to oppose austerity and had shifted towards neoliberalism. In 2015, following a defeat at the 2015 United Kingdom general election, self-described socialist Jeremy Corbyn took over from Ed Miliband as leader of the Labour Party. In France, Olivier Bessensinet, the Revolutionary Communist League LCR candidate in the 2007 presidential election, received 1,498,581 votes, 4.08%, double that of the communist candidate. The LCR abolished itself in 2009 to initiate a broad anti-capitalist party, the New Anticapitalist Party, whose stated aim is to "...build a new socialist, democratic perspective for the 21st century." On 25 May 2014, the Spanish left-wing party Podemos entered candidates for the 2014 European parliamentary elections, some of which were unemployed. In a surprise result, it polled 7.98% of the vote and thus was awarded five seats out of 54 while the older United Left was the third largest overall force obtaining 10.03% and five seats, four more than the previous elections. 
The current government of Portugal was established on 26 November 2015 as a Socialist Party minority government led by Prime Minister António Costa. Costa succeeded in securing support for a socialist minority government by the Left Bloc BE, the Portuguese Communist Party PCP, and the Ecologist Party the Greens, PEV. Americas <inaudible> 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 The U.S. city of Milwaukee has been led by a series of socialist mayors, namely Frank Ziedler, Emil Seidel and Daniel Hone. A U.S. senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders, was once mayor of the state's largest city, Burlington. Sanders described himself as a democratic socialist and has praised Scandinavian-style social democracy. In 2016, Sanders made a bid for the Democratic Party presidential candidate, thereby gaining considerable popular support, particularly among the younger generation, but lost the nomination to Hillary Clinton. In Canada, the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation CCF, the precursor to the Social Democratic New Democratic Party NDP, had significant success in provincial politics. In 1944, the Saskatchewan CCF formed the first socialist government in North America. At the federal level, the NDP was the official opposition, from 2011 through 2015, for the Encyclopædia Britannica, "...the attempt by Salvador Allende to unite Marxists and other reformers in a socialist reconstruction of Chile is most representative of the direction that Latin American socialists have taken since the late 20th century." Several socialist or socialist leaning leaders have followed Allende's example in winning election to office in Latin American countries. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega, Bolivian President Evo Morales and Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa refer to their political programs as socialist and Chavez adopted the term socialism of the 21st century. After winning re-election in December 2006, Chavez said now more than ever, I am obliged to move Venezuela's path towards socialism." Chávez was also re-elected in October 2012 for his third six-year term as president, but he died in March 2013 from cancer. After Chávez's death on 5 March 2013, vice president from Chávez's party Nicolás Maduro assumed the powers and responsibilities of the president. A special election was held on 14 April of the same year to elect a new president, which Maduro won by a tight margin as the candidate of the United Socialist Party of Venezuela and he was formally inaugurated on 19 April. Pink Tide is a term being used in contemporary 21st century political analysis in the media and elsewhere to describe the perception that leftist ideology in general and left-wing politics in particular are increasingly influential in Latin America. Foro de São Paulo is a conference of leftist political parties and other organizations from Latin America and the Caribbean. It was launched by the Workers' Party Portuguese, Partido dos Trabalhadores, PT, of Brazil in 1990 in the city of São Paulo. The Forum of São Paulo was constituted in 1990 when the Brazilian Workers' Party approached other parties and social movements of Latin America and the Caribbean with the objective of debating the new international scenario after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the consequences of the implementation of what were taken as neoliberal policies adopted at the time by contemporary right leaning governments in the region, the stated main objective of the conference being to argue for alternatives to neoliberalism. Among its member include current socialist and social democratic parties currently in government in the region such as Bolivia's Movement for Socialism, Brazil's Workers' Party, the Ecuadorian Pays Alliance, the Venezuelan United Socialist Party of Venezuela, the Socialist Party of Chile, the Uruguayan Broad Front, the Nicaraguan Sandinista National Liberation Front and the Salvadorian Farabundo Marti National Liberation Front. Oceania. Australia has seen a recent increase in interest of socialism in recent years, especially amongst youth. It is strongest in Victoria, where three socialist parties have merged into the Victorian Socialists, who aim to address problems in housing and public transportation. New Zealand has a small socialist scene, mainly dominated by Trotskyist groups. The current Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has publicly condemned capitalism but describes herself as a social democrat. Melanesian socialism developed in the 1980s, inspired by African socialism. 
It aims to achieve full independence from Britain and France in Melanesian territories and creation of a Melanesian federal union. It is very popular with the New Caledonia independence movement. Topic: <laughs> Economic positions. Democratic socialists have promoted a variety of different models of socialism ranging from market socialism where socially owned enterprises operate in competitive markets and are in some cases self-managed by their workforce to non-market participatory socialism based on decentralized economic planning. Historically, democratic socialism has been committed to a decentralized form of economic planning where productive units are integrated into a single organization and organized on the basis of self-management as opposed to Stalinist style command planning. For example, Eugene V. Debs and Norman Thomas, both of whom were United States presidential candidates for the Socialist Party of America, understood socialism to be an economic system structured upon production for use and social ownership in place of the profit system and private ownership. Contemporary proponents of market socialism have argued that the major reasons for the economic shortcomings of Soviet type planned economies was their failure to create rules and operational criteria for the efficient operation of state enterprises and the lack of democracy in the political system systems that the Soviet-type economies were combined with. Parliamentary Democratic Socialist Parties The following is a list of socialist parties and democratic socialist parties that currently have representation in the legislature of their country. A governing party including as junior coalition partner Notable self-described democratic socialists Politicians Heads of state Other politicians Karl Barth, Swiss Protestant theologian Nikki Ashton, Canadian Member of Parliament for Churchill Kiwatanuk ASCII in Manitoba and leadership candidate in the New Democratic Party leadership election, 2017 Tony Benn, leading British Labour politician Anurin Bevan, father of the National Health Service Lee Carter, elected to the Virginia House of Delegates in 2017 Jeremy Corbyn, leader of the British Labour Party and leader of the opposition 2015 -present, James Connolly, Irish revolutionary Eugene V. Debs, American Union leader, five times presidential candidate of the Socialist Party of America Tommy Douglas, Canadian politician, father of Medicare Michael Harrington, founder of Democratic Socialists of America Obafemi Awolowo, founder of Action Group and first premier of Western Regional Government, Nigeria Dennis Healy, British Labour politician Ken Livingstone, Mayor of London 2000-2008 Bernie Sanders, U.S. Senator from Vermont, self-described Democratic Socialist Kashama Sawant, Seattle City Council Member Dennis Skinner, British Labour politician Norman Thomas, six-time presidential candidate for the Socialist Party of America Neil Kinnock, self-described, in opposition to SDP defectors Topic. Intellectuals and activists Topic. Criticism Topic. Compatibility of «socialism» and «democracy» Some politicians, economists, and theorists have argued that «socialism» and «democracy» are incompatible. For instance, economist Milton Friedman stated that, "...a society which is socialist cannot also be democratic, in the sense of guaranteeing individual freedom." Sociologist Robert Nisbet argued in 1978 that there is, "...not a single free socialism to be found anywhere in the world." Irving Kristol argued, "...democratic socialism turns out to be an inherently unstable compound, a contradiction in terms." Every social democratic party, once in power, soon finds itself choosing, at one point after another, between the socialist society it aspires to and the liberal society that lathered sick, fathered, it. 
He added, S socialist movements end up in a society where liberty is the property of the state, and is or is not doled out to its citizens along with other contingent benefits." Richard Pipes wrote, The merger of political and economic power implicit in socialism greatly strengthens the ability of the state and its bureaucracy to control the population. Theoretically, this capacity need not be exercised and need not lead to growing domination of the population by the state. In practice, such a tendency is virtually inevitable. For one thing, the socialization of the economy must lead to a numerical growth of the bureaucracy required to administer it, and this process cannot fail to augment the power of the state. For another, socialism leads to a tug of war between the state, bent on enforcing its economic monopoly, and the ordinary citizen, equally determined to evade it. The result is repression and the creation of specialized repressive organs. Topic. Response One of the major scholars who have argued that socialism and democracy are compatible is the Austrian-born American economist Joseph Schumpeter, who was hostile to socialism. In his book Capitalism, Socialism and Democracy first published in 1942, he emphasize s that political democracy was thoroughly compatible with socialism in its fullest sense, noting that he didn't believe that democracy was a good political system, but rather advocated to republican values. In a 1963 address to the All India Congress Committee, Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru stated, Political democracy has no meaning if it does not embrace economic democracy. An economic democracy is nothing but socialism. Political historian Theodore Draper wrote, I know of no political group which has resisted totalitarianism in all its guises more steadfastly than democratic socialists. Robert Heilbronner. There is, of course, no conflict between such a socialism and freedom as we have described it. Indeed, this conception of socialism is the very epitome of these freedoms, referring to open association of individuals in political and social life, the democratization and humanization of work, and the cultivation of personal talents and creativities. Bayard Rustin wrote, For me, socialism has meaning only if it is democratic. Of the many claimants to socialism only one has a valid title. That socialism which views democracy as valuable per se, which stands for democracy unequivocally, and which continually modifies socialist ideas and programs in the light of democratic experience. This is the socialism of the labor, social democratic, and socialist parties of Western Europe. Kenneth Arrow argued, We cannot be sure that the principles of democracy and socialism are compatible until we can observe a viable society following both principles. But there is no convincing evidence or reasoning which would argue that a democratic socialist movement is inherently self-contradictory. Nor need we fear that gradual moves in the direction of increasing government intervention will lead to an irreversible move to serfdom. Referring to the road to serfdom by Friedrich Hayek. William Pfaff wrote, it might be argued that socialism ineluctably breeds state bureaucracy, which then imposes its own kinds of restrictions upon individual liberties. This is what the Scandinavians complain about. But Italy's champion bureaucracy owes nothing to socialism. American bureaucracy grows as luxuriantly and behaves as officiously as any other. Topic see also Social democracy Liberal socialism Economic democracy List of democratic socialist parties and organizations Republican democracy Popular socialism Workers' Council Topic References Topic Bibliography Logie Barrow and Ian Bullock, Democratic Ideas and the British Labour Movement, 1880-1914, Cambridge University Press, 1996, ISBN 9780521560400 129 Donald F. Buskey, Democratic Socialism, A Global Survey Greenwood Publishing, 2000 ISBN 0-275-96886-3 Draper, Hal 1966. The Two Souls of Socialism. New Politics. 5 1, 57-84. Peter Hain. Back to the Future of Socialism, Policy Press, the 26th of January 2015, ISBN 978-1-44732-166-8 Michael Harrington, Socialism, Past and Future, Arcade Publishing, Little, Brown, 1989. 
Roy Hattersley Choose Freedom, The Future of Democratic Socialism, Penguin, 1987 ISBN 0-14-010494-1 Ralph Miliband Socialism for a Skeptical Age, Polity Press, London, 1994 David Reisman, ed., Democratic Socialism in Britain, Classic Texts in Economic and Political Thought, 1825-1952 Chateau and Pickering, 1996 ISBN 978-1-85196-285 5, 3, includes texts by William Morris, George Bernard Shaw, G. D. H. Cole, Richard Crossman and Anurin Bevan, Norman Thomas Democratic Socialism, A New Appraisal, League for Industrial Democracy, 1953 Jim Tomlinson Democratic Socialism and Economic Policy, The Attlee Years, 1945-1951 Cambridge University Press, 1997 ISBN 0-521-55095-5 External links What is Democratic Socialism? Socialism. Hugh and A. Joseph Schwartz and Jason Schulman Towards Freedom, The Theory and Practice of Democratic Socialism Democratic Socialism in India Ralph Miliband and Marcel Liebman. Beyond Social Democracy